92.7 WOBM. Good morning, Sean Sue with you on this brand new Monday morning. It is November 14th, 8.55 right now. 38 degrees joining us is Dr. Adrian Pristis, Director of the Sleep of Sleep Medicine for Meridian Neuroscience, part of the Hack and Sack Meridian Health. And uh, Doctor, good morning. Welcome to the program. Hi, Doctor. Thank you. Good morning. You know, sleep is always something Sue and I joke about because, you know, I've been 25 years now uh, getting up at 2.30 in the morning. Sue, what did you say the other day? 18. 18 years that you've been getting up, uh, you know, around like four in the morning. So, you know, our sleep schedule, unlike anybody else's, but let's talk a little bit about it. How do you know if you're having a problem with sleep? Let's start there. Well, it becomes obvious when you're willing to admit that you don't feel as good as you should during the day. You should get up in the morning and feel pretty good. Everybody's entitled to about 15 minutes of being a little bit grumpy, first thing. Mm -hmm. But you should be able to get up, start moving around, feeling like you're awake and rested, and that should that should stay with you all day. It, it, it shouldn't kind of take a lull at certain times where you feel like you need to nap. And everybody's mm -hmm. entitled to a bad night's sleep once in a while, but the vast majority of the days, you should feel good all day long and be ready to go to bed at about the time you usually do every night. And that should be your routine most days. And if that's not the case, then you have a problem. Yeah, if you're one of those people that are like are nodding off, say you're a nine to five type of person, you're nodding off, you know, at one o'clock at your desk, might be a you know red flag there for you. Absolutely. All right. What is hmm. a sleep study like? I mean, really? we hear all kinds of things. You know, we hear you know that you got to like you know uh, underwater scuba gear. <laughs> They hook up electrodes to you. All these different things. Tell us what it really is. <laughs> well, there, there's, some really? truth to, there's some truth to that, but it's not really that bad. You know, competition is good, and there is a lot of competition out there. So everybody's trying their best to make that as comfortable as possible. So most sleep labs these days look like a hotel. You have your own bedroom, a bathroom, a mm. TV. It's private. Yes, you do get hooked up to, to some wires, but over the years they've all been approved, and, mm -hmm. and it's it kind of gets all holstered in and you get tucked away nicely at night so it's not that bad now granted it's not a perfect night's sleep in your own bed you've you've got people watching and listening but it's not that bad at the end of the day when people come back to the office they admit it's not it's not a horrible experience not ideal they don't want to do it every night but it's it's something that's very doable and reasonable very few people have a miserable night's sleep okay mm. How, why are they important these sleep studies why do we want to do them well, the, the, that's, a, that's a good, long question. Um, the, the importance of, of sleep can't be underestimated. Yeah. Your health depends on it. There are a great number of sleep disorders that are listed in, in medical literature, numbering more than 80. Any one of them can add to the bad night's sleep, the mm -hmm. tiredness during the day. Some of them impact seriously on your health. Mm -hmm. The most common one that people are aware of is sleep apnea. Sleep apnea can lead to some very serious health issues like heart attack and stroke, poorly controlled blood pressure, poorly controlled blood sugar if you're a diabetic, uh, leads to blood clots and other such serious mm. matters. And if you don't address these things, you put yourself at risk, just like the smoker who can't stop smoking. Yeah. It is that serious. What do we do to get more information? How do we get more information about the sleep study programs and, you know, sleep in general through, uh, you know, Hackensack Meridian Health? Well, every primary care doctor knows a lot about sleep. It is a good part of their practice, whether it be insomnia, sleep apnea, or one of the other disorders. So go to your primary care doctor, express your concerns, tell them what your symptoms mm -hmm. are, and they will, and they will point you in the right direction. Whether they know you need a sleep study or they need to get you to a sleep specialist, Meridian is uh, blessed with a great number of those folks. So uh, there is help right around the corner. And you can also visit meridianwellrested.com is a website to go to. Absolutely. And right, Dr. Real good. Quick, uh, children are doing this now too, right? Children are a big part of sleep disorders these days. Mm -hmm. It's not to be underestimated. For example, attention deficit disorder, a serious matter everybody knows about. About 25% of those kids have a, a, a need for a sleep study. Mm. And, since and it's safe are, for the kids to get. Absolutely safe. Mom or dad can stay with the kid for the night and um, usually mm. not too much of an issue. It's a comfortable setting. Most of our um, labs have accommodations. As a matter of fact, all of our labs have accommodations for that kind of setup. So the child can stay there um, with mom or dad. Well, thank you today for coming in. Dr. Adrian Pristis, the Director of Sleep Medicine for Meridian Neuroscience, part of the Hackensack Meridian Health Department. And we want to tell you, go to meridianwellrested.com for more details. Excellent. And so, get a good night's sleep. I think it's sleep. so, so important. Get a good night's sleep tonight, Sue. So.